Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a Will I Buy It? where I'm gonna be talking through all of these new and upcoming makeup releases, sharing my thoughts on them and letting you know what I plan to pick up and what I am leaving alone. So without further ado, let's get started. Now it's going to be a long one. I'd suggest snacks, I'd suggest drinks of your choice because usually, I know it's time to do a will I buy it when there are like 10 hot new releases. My list here is more like 20. It's been a while since I've done one and in this sort of pre-holiday season, they don't stop, they don't slow down. There's a lot of them, so get comfy. That's what I'm saying. So starting us off is Rem Beauty, who have come out with a new foundation, the Sweetener Foundation, nice little name, 60 shades, congratulations. So this is a clinically proven skincare color hybrid, which hydrates skin instantly and over time with buildable, blendable coverage. It all sounds fine it all sounds fine this is not a brand i'm really familiar with i know it's ariana grande's brand right there are so many of these i can't always remember whose is whose anymore there's ariana grande there's selena gomez there's hayley bieber lady gaga everybody's got a brand these days okay so i can't be expected to know who belongs to who it's confusing but this all sounds okay and i'm a big fan of how many shades there are for a start but this is maybe a wait for review for me because i don't know anything about this brand i certainly don't know enough to know whether i'm going to be able to pick my right shade online because that's my only option so this is a hold my horses wait for a view i like the look of the packaging i like some of the descriptions but i don't trust them i don't trust the brand yet because we haven't met okay i need to get to know her before i can i mean the brand not ariana herself I think that's a, that's a bit much, you know, to have to get to know the brand donor before you try their products. That would be silly. But I'm open-minded about it, you know? I don't have a lot of feelings. I don't really have excitement. I don't have dread. I just have whelm, neither under or over. Moving on. I'm gonna have to whisper for this one, okay? Because we're not allowed to be talking about this. Their spies are everywhere, okay? So don't tell anyone that we spoke about this, okay? It's between me and you. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the Natasha Denona Zenon Midi Palette. I have seen the pictures. Who knows what's going on with these Natasha Denona leaks? It's a strong theory that this is just intentional and that they always do this as part of their marketing technique, that they're sort of giving us these leaks and these sneaky peeks to drive the excitement and the anticipation. And let me tell you, it works, it works. We all start talking about it, sending it to each other, saying, oh, look, look, and it's all very exciting. So well done, Natasha Denone. <laughs> You've tricked us all, okay? It's working, that's what I'll say. The one negative that I'll say about this sort of sneak peek tactic, whether it's a tactic or an accident, who will ever really know? But whatever it is, the tricky thing about it is that you tend to get sort of unreleased, not official images of the palette. And it's kind of, I've seen two different pictures of this palette. And the first was like, it's a no. It's a no from me. I didn't get the mini because I don't wear black eyeshadow ever. Like that, I don't even wear that on like a night. Even New Year's Eve, I, I'm not rocking that smoky of an eye. So I skipped on the mini. I don't know why I'd need more of that sort of family of eyeshadows when I didn't even want the five pan. You know what I'm saying? So this is very much the mini Zenon, but midi size. So it's exactly what you'd expect. But I've seen, a, then I saw the second photo which was, I don't know, different lighting or a different angle. And you know, Natasha, she's cheeky. Some of her formulas really look very different on the eye to how they look in the pan. It's those like creamy mattes, I think, that do it. No, it's the cream to powders. Those look nothing like on the eye that they do in the pan. It's like a completely different shade. It's often quite surprising when you put it actually on the eye and <laughs> that's not what I thought it was going to look like. It can be disastrous. You have to proceed with caution. So I don't know if it's that, I don't know if it's that there's some duochrome formulas in here. So depending on the angle, you see the different shifts, 
But the second picture, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I think ultimately, if I pick this up, it's only going to be for review purposes. I wouldn't buy this for my own purposes because I wouldn't use it. It's not really my type of palette. And looking at the palette, what I can tell is I need another one to use with this because I'm looking at these mattes and though they're, you're only really getting a smoky eye out of this palette and I don't really do a smoky eye. And if I do, I tend to do a more like neutral smoky palette than the smoky eye that this is going to give me and I feel like the mattes that are in here in order for me to use this palette in the way I like to do my makeup and be a bit more soft glam I'd need to like reach for another palette and I don't I'm lazy okay I could barely be bothered to reach for the first one let alone a second one so I think for my purposes I would definitely pass all day on this I may depending on interest and availability and how long it takes to get here pick it up for review purposes but it would be a pass for me personally it's just not I can appreciate it and I feel like Natasha is really smashing it out of the park these days and it's nice to see something very different, you know, very different. We've gone from day to nighttime, quite literally with the colour stories that we've been seeing from Natasha recently. So I think this will be very popular with people who love this type of makeup and would do a lot of this, but that is not me. Okay, it's too exciting. Next up, let's talk about the Lancome Care and Glow Concealer. Now, there are a lot of concealers coming out at the moment. I don't know if you've noticed. They're coming out of our ears. It's hard to contain them. This one is a pass for me. I do like Lancome as a brand, but I didn't like the Care and Glow foundation. I don't know that I can necessarily tell you what I didn't like about it. I'm not sure I can remember. I think it was that it didn't really have any glow. So I felt tricked, you know? I see the word glow and I'm diving in. That's my vibe. Glow, yes. There's no second question. Does it say glow? Yes, then I'm interested. But the, I feel like the foundation was actually not really glowy. Um, and I just, I don't think it was my type of foundation. From what I remember, it was okay. I was disappointed with the glow, given it was right there in the name. So for that reason, didn't really like the foundation. I don't really feel excited about the concealer that's how i'm feeling maybe i'll eat my hat maybe you'll change my mind maybe i'll see a few reviews and you'll tempt me but at the moment it's a no didn't really like the foundation it wasn't really for me and i can't try every one of these concealers that's coming out every five seconds i have to prioritize and that one is the least exciting to me. And while we're talking about concealer, let's move on to the YSL All Hours Concealer. So they did previously have an All Hours Concealer, so I think this is a reformulation. They're calling it the All Hours Precise Angles Concealer. It's got that delightful little, boop, triangular little wand there, which I'm enjoying to look at. It looks nice. I can see how that would be useful to get right in that little corner around the nose. I like what they I like where they're going with the shape of that. It also looks ginormous. 15 mils, extremely generous. That's what I like to see. I love a bit of generosity when it comes to fill size. It says it's a full coverage luminous matte and the fact it's been reformulated fills me with hope that it's going to be great because, you know, they whacked out one previous Previously, and now they've pres presumably gone and worked on it and made it even better. So that's making me think this is going to be a great one. It's a decent price point, especially for 15mm fill size. I'm going to get to this one. 100% unless I see some horrifying reviews, I'm definitely going to get to this one. But it's I'm not in a rush. You know, I say concealers, they're permanent. I'll try one when I'm ready in my own time and I'm good and ready. I won't be rushed. I'm not running out to buy it. But I am intrigued. I am interested. A lot of the description sounds great. I'm intrigued by the pointy little concealer wand. But there's another concealer that I'm more interested in and is going to be my first that I try next. So let's talk about it. It's the House Labs, okay? I'm sure you probably already knew that, did you? I think you did. Reason being that you guys know I'm a huge fan of the foundation. I absolutely love the House Labs foundation. I think it's beautiful. It has exactly the finish that I love in a foundation. It has great shades for me, olive undertones. 
<laughs> I love the bottle, the packaging. I love the consistency. It wears very well. I love the coverage. It's one of my all time favorite foundations. So of course, when they come along with a matching concealer, I'm going to dive head first into a vat of it and no one will stop me. So this claims to be a revolutionary hydrating clean concealer that does more than cover. What does it do? Tell us. 20 plus skincare ingredients. I don't care about that. In 31 shades across six shade families with four undertones. I do like that. I do care about that. That's just great to see. I love the undertones. Give us them all, you know? Just me? Okay. But this claims to be a lightweight, long wear, skin loving concealer, medium buildable coverage. I would like a bit more coverage. I do like a full coverage concealer, but I'll forgive it because it going to match with my favorite foundation and also I would say that's how they describe the foundation but I think it's pretty decent like mm, approaching full coverage so maybe this will be the same I'm ordering it as we speak I actually didn't know it was available here until I googled it to find out the information and there it was sitting there waiting for me to get it I'm ordering it right now live as we speak And I'll get back to you, but that is a yes. I'm excited for that one, as you can tell. So that's my number one. YSL, next on the list. Longcom, you'll be lucky, let's be honest. Next up, we have another foundation, and you guessed it, it's another celebrity makeup brand. This time it's Rose Ink, which is another criminally neglected brand in general from myself. I don't think I've tried anything from them. I'm so sorry. It's time to kick me out of the beauty community. I failed you. Honestly, I'm surprised I lasted as long as I did. But Rose Inc's offering is the Soft Light Skin Smoothing Liquid Foundation. So I'm on the fence about this one. You guys have been telling me to try their tinted serum and I feel like a foundation is kind of outside of the box for what we've seen from Rose Inc. So far, they've been very like dabbing bits on very very natural and understated and then here they come with a full-on foundation so I don't know that I was expecting this from them but I like the sounds of it medium coverage that's typically my sweet spot and all of the smoothing and all of the you know targeting towards dry skin mature skin that all sounds great it says it's hydrating and weightless it looks like it's got a pretty decent shade range but it's matte, mm, the M word, a swear word in the Holdcroft household, as you guys know. So that is slightly putting me off, okay? It's making me think, oh, I'm gonna wait for reviews. I'm just not a matte girl. I need the glow, the luminosity. So this is a pass for now. You're kind of, you're luring me in with the medium coverage and the smoothness, the smoothing and the mature skin claims, but then you're putting me off with the, matte finish this is also not currently available here so again i've told you before i'm impatient i won't wait if you make me wait i've forgotten you exist by next friday so hmm, the clock is ticking i wasn't that interested to begin with because you've gone and used the m word and now you're not available to me so that's two strikes i think i'm going to pass on this for now if i start hearing revolutionary claims from reviews which I'd be surprised if I'm honest, then we'll, we'll readdress it. For now, it's a pass. It's got the M word in it. I can't get it straight away. So no, it's a no. I'm committing, I'm hopping off the fence. Okay, so next up, the first fragrance of this video. This is Parfums de Mali's Altair. And this sounds right up my street, delightful. This is 100% going on my list. Just listen to this notes list. This is described as an amber vanilla. Annoyingly, Parfums de Mali are a house who like to say that fragrances are for men or women, which I don't love. Like, don't tell me what's for me. I'll decide that, okay? And I don't agree that any fragrance can be worn by women only or men only. It's just a preference thing, how you like to smell the notes that you like to smell. I do understand stereotypically describing fragrances as leaning more feminine, feminine or masculine to help people picture it, but I don't like it's for men. Well, I'm buying it. What are you going to do about it? You know? So the top notes in here, bergamot, cardamom, orange blossom, cinnamon. The cinnamon, it, you know, that's an immediate like green flag to me, but the rest are like, okay, 
notes on my, you know, preference list. Middle notes, bourbon, vanilla, and Elemi, starting to get my attention. Base notes, praline, musk, and broxen, and guacwood. Now you've got my full attention. Parfums de Mali is one of my favorite houses, and this sounds from the reviews and the descriptions like it's going to be right up my street. Something warm, spicy for the cooler months is ideal, and their performance is always strong. It's They don't typically do like bomb perf performance fragrances, but they're never really weak either. They're kind of in the middle. They sound beautiful. A lot of the reviews are sort of saying it's, you know, boozy vanilla. Lots of people saying this is quite sweet and sexy vanilla fragrance, solid performance. A lot of these notes really appeal to me. A lot of the fragrances it's being compared to are like my favorite. A lot of people comparing it to Silky Woods, which is an absolute favorite of mine from Goldfield and Banks. Also Spiritus Double vanilla and tobacco vanilla from Tom Ford. So there's a lot of like things that are telling me I will like this fragrance. It's definitely going on my list. You guys know I try to buy only one perfume a month because I just don't want to end up with hundreds of perfumes that I can't use. So I try to limit myself to one fragrance a month and that one is second on my list to buy. Okay, so it's coming home with me at some point but probably not this month if I'm good and I stick to my goal. But it will live here shortly. Next up let's talk about the Patrick Tarr Major Dimensions 3 eyeshadow palette. I did talk about this in my you do not need that video but to clarify my personal feelings on it as opposed to what I think you need or don't, I don't need it either. I think I said that in the video. I'm passing on this. It just doesn't really appeal to me. I think because I have Bieber and then I really love the Velvet Liaisons palette that I picked up from Pat McGrath, both of those. Although Bieber does have a couple of shimmers in it, it's mostly an all matte neutral everyday palette. I have a, a couple of others that are kind of that similar thing. I've got the Makeup by Mario one Master Mattes that I don't really use because I prefer the others. And I have a couple of Four Pans, Deserts, haze from charlotte tilbury as well so i just do not need another one of these palettes in my life so this is an easy pass for me i do like these kind of palettes i just have too many of them already at this point so that's a pass also thought i would clarify my position in case you weren't sure based on my you do not need that of the chanel la rouge 31 lipsticks collection so at the moment i am absolutely not running out to spend 140 pounds on a lipstick i don't know if that wasn't clear in my you do not need that but that's how i feel it's just such a ridiculous amount of money and i'm not someone who doesn't appreciate or like really luxurious things that cost a lot of money sometimes i do i mean i spent a huge amount of money on my baccalar rouge shimmering body oil last year essentially for an ornament because i just loved it so much and that to me was something i would really treasure and enjoy and i have perfumes i will happily spend hundreds of pounds on because that's my treat myself and how I spoil myself and my luxuries that I like to invest in but lipsticks is not really something that I personally like to really invest a huge amount of money in or that I get a huge amount of joy and excitement and treasure them if they're super expensive so it's not I don't want to say it's lost on me I get the excitement if you are a real Chanel lover and a Chanel stan and you absolutely adore the brand I think you would get a lot of joy and enjoyment out of this and then I understand it for you but I'm not that person and the issue that I've always had with Chanel's lipsticks is that the shades are just not really my shades and I think if there was a color of lipstick here that really spoke to me and was like my shade I'd probably grab it that's how I feel but at the moment looking at swatches like to pay on £140. I want to actually like the lipstick, not just have a fancy bullet. I want to like the lipstick and feel like I will use it a lot and get a lot of joy out of it for the money. And there's just no shades there that are really grabbing me and saying, oh, that's really my shade. That's something that I'm looking for for a lipstick. They are all those sort of variations of reds that Chanel typically sticks to. And I get why they're doing their their thing for this collection because it's obviously really aimed at like Chanel collectors. I'm not one of them and just these are not my shades. So at the moment they're making it very easy for me to resist because I don't like those shades. So so great, but I would imagine they would extend the shade range at some point and then it's not it's a never say never. 
for me. I do appreciate a beautiful, nice, luxurious component, but what's inside has to excite me as well. And at the moment, that's where I'm not really that excited about it. Certainly not 140 pounds excited, you know? Next, let's talk about another concealer. It's the Makeup by Mario concealer. He's also joined the concealer gang for September. They all had a meeting somewhere. They got around a board table and they all said, we're going to do concealers this month, guys. And they presumably shook on it. That's what I can only assume has happened. So the Makeup by Mario concealer is, again, it's one that it doesn't really excite me or tickle my pickle at this moment. I didn't love the foundation. I had a bit of a mixed experience, couldn't get a shade. I think I tried a couple of shades, neither really worked for me. I think that's my memory serves me correctly on that. And it just didn't really work that well for me. I think it was super, super glowy and didn't wear very well. And I just, I think I have struggled with a bit of the texture as well. It was very serum-y, not my typical texture. So I didn't love it. It never made it into my top drawer of foundations, put it that way. So again, because I wasn't a big fan of the foundation, it makes me like not wanna bother with the concealer. So this is the Awakening Concealer and it's described as visibly lifting, blurring and brightening under eyes and complete complexion, has caffeine in it to de-puff, tighten and smooth skin, medium coverage, buildable formula, crease proof, long wearing, self-setting, natural skin like finish. A lot of a lot of good stuff there. Only 22 shades, which surprises me. I thought there would be more. Decent-ish price point, $29. Some of it sounds okay, but that shade range, when you actually look at the swatches, I see myself having the same issue I had with the foundation and just not really finding a shade range, a shade, sorry, that I love and that works really well because there's basically an entire arm of the same shade here, an arm and a half even. Very little range there among the shades. So I'm just, I wasn't really that excited about it to begin with because I didn't love the foundation. I'm even less excited about it when I look at the swatches here. So yeah, again, it's probably fourth on my list of concealers to try. <laughs> so I might get to it by this time next year. But for now, it's a no. Next up, let's talk about this ABH highlighter. Now, I, I think I've seen many people this reminding them of the Amrezy highlighter, which was a huge hit for ABH collaboration between ABH and Amrezy. They released that highly, highlighter years ago. It was very limited edition and everybody wanted it brought back. Anyone who missed out on it was devastated. Lots of people who actually got it, but loved it so much they wanted like another, like they used a whole one up. People have been begging for it to come back for years and it never has. But this highlighter is reminding lots of people of how that one looked, like shade-wise, I get it. It's obviously a completely different component and sort of embossing, but I get where they're coming from. It, it does look, it reminds me of that as well. But do you know what it reminds me of more is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood uh, highlighter that we had for holiday a few years ago it had all the stars on the it literally looks exactly like that to me is that anyone else I don't think the color looks similar because the Charlotte Tilbury was quite golden um, and this looks more of a sort of like beige like champagne almost like taupey is that just me so this one looks lighter and not as warm as the Charlotte Tilbury. It's described as being, so it's the Glow Seeker highlighter and it's described as giving a multi-dimensional glow with the feel of second skin. It's a baked powder gel hybrid, which is like my favorite formula when it comes to highlighters. And it promises to be weightless with the reflectivity of a liquid. Is reflectivity in fact a word? I think that's the first time I may have used it, if it is. So it's supposed to build from like subtle luminosity to champagne gold. It all sounds great to me. I will pick this up for sure. It sounds like it's right up my street. It's exactly the type of highlighter I like to use. And it sounds like nice and natural. I like the look of it. It appeals to me. And given that we still haven't seen the Chanel ones, <laughs> I'm trying to fill that void. Okay, so I will let you know how this goes. It sounds all great, whether it lives up to the promise or not. Watch this space, you little rascals. Next up, let's talk about this Estee Lauder. What is this called? Futurist Skin Tint Serum Foundation. Another one I spoke about in my You Do Not Need That video. But do I plan 
to buy this one. I don't, I don't plan to buy this one. This is 100% a wait for review for me and I would suggest, as I did in my You Do Not Need This uh, video, I would suggest you wait as well because to me, there's a lot of contradictions in this description of this foundation and I don't know if you've noticed, but brands, typically like 90% of brands like to exaggerate wildly when it comes to how long a foundation wears. Am I the only one who's noticed this? Lots of foundations claim to wear for 24 hours. And I know for a fact that's a lie. Why are you bold faced lying to us right in the eyes? You're looking us in the eyes and lying to us. No foundation is wearing perfectly for 24 hours, is it? Don't. Don't fib to me. And then you'll get other foundations that claim like 16 hour wear. And I think don't lie, just be, just give us the cold hard facts so we know what to expect because there's nothing worse than being disappointed. You know, if you told me it only lasts for five minutes, well, at least I know what I'm going into, you know, tell me it lasts for five to six hours without being set and I'll know, okay, I can cope with five to six hours typically that's how long I'm outside of the house, fine. But a nurse wouldn't want to wear it. But tell someone it's gonna last for 16 hours and then they get halfway through their day and they're looking like a melted ice cream, we're gonna get cross. I feel like it's important to manage our expectations realistically. However, based on that pattern of behavior from foundations and brands, where they tell us a foundation lasts an inordinate length of time, and it's always a bit less than that, several hours at least, this foundation claims to last up to eight hours. So they're saying this is only going to last you up to a maximum of eight hours, which says to me it's actually gonna last like four based on the pattern of what we've previously seen about brands and their foundation wear time claims, we've got to take a bit off what they say. You know, it's like when a man tells you how big the fish he caught was and he says it's it's this big, you know, it's actually, you've got to take a bit off, you know. If, if someone online dating app says they're six foot, you know, they're actually like, 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, I think this is one of those situations. If you've told me it's gonna last me a maximum of eight hours, it's not going to, it's gonna last like five. So that's my first point here, okay? We spoke about the pipette in my you don't need that video. I don't need a pipette, that's the last thing I need, okay? If anything, it's just gonna really annoy me and make a mess. It's got the word oil infusion on the bottle. It's a serum foundation, it's got SPF. It just, there's a lot of red flags in here for me. So it's a pass, it's a, it's a pass with a, a barge pole currently. Again, by all means, watch lots of reviews. I'll eat a hat if I turn out to be wrong, but my prediction is that this is going to be a sweaty, oily mess three minutes in. That's my prediction. But I do enjoy being proven wrong sometimes, as long as it's not my husband. Next up, the second fragrance I want to talk to you about today, and this is Killian's Smoking Hot. Oof, suits you, sir. Look at this spicy advertising. Very sexy. So again, Killian is a house that I have a good solid rapport with, not the personally, but you know, I enjoy their fragrances is what I'm saying. I get excited about a Killian release, especially when it's got all this smoke flying about because I like a tobacco-y, warm, spicy fragrance. So this piqued my attention. I looked at the notes list and I, mm, I'm not sure. And I'll tell you for why, because in the opening, we have apple, cinnamon, oh yes, hot toddy anyone? Yes, please, smoke. Now it's not tobacco, it's actual smoke, like there's a fire, thick black smoke. That's what we're talking about. Then in the middle, we have tobacco and moss. And then in the base, we have bourbon vanilla and orconox, which I had never heard of before in my life. It is apparently a natural compound extracted from exhausted clary sage. Oh, I wish you'd had a lie down. I'm so sorry to hear that. But apparently it's like a woody, musky, powdery scent that it gives off. And it's like a, it's a synthetic scent, essentially. So fine, okay. It's in there. So based on that, the smoke is putting me off because I like tobacco in fragrances, but I don't like to smell like burning, is what I'm saying. 
I've been reading the reviews and there's a lot of people comparing it to Angel's Share, which is one of my favorite fragrances from the house, a big favorite fragrance of mine for a long time. But then there's people comparing it to Tobacco Law, which is one of those fragrances that is a bit too smoky for me, a bit too burned smoky for me. Also on the list of perfumes it reminds people of is Apple Brandy from Killian, which I also love. So I'm like, I'm going back and forth. I'm very confused. I've already purchased my fragrance for this month. So I'm kind of like eyeballing up what's going to be next. And I think this is gonna be behind all thy ear from Parthas de Mali. I think that one just feels more unique, not unique as such as it is a pretty standard fragrance and notes list, but it's not something that I have lots of, whereas I feel like this is probably gonna end up being something I either don't like or something that is very similar to Angel's Share, but I probably don't like as much as Angel's Share. That's what I feel. The reviews are very, very mixed. So I don't really wanna blind buy it. So for me, this is like, oh, hold your horses. It's on my list, I'm eyeballing it, I'm interested. It's got my attention, but I'm not sure I wanna leap into a blind buy for this one. I might try and get a sample because yeah, it seems like it's not blind buy safe. It's pretty divisive from the reviews. So yeah, I'm like, I'm interested. I want a sample first. Okay, next up, let's talk about this Huda Beauty Easy Bake Press. Now, Huda Beauty's Easy Bake Loose, about the hoose, was my favorite under eye setting powder for a very long time before the Pat McGrath came along and changed and revolutionized my entire existence. I still like it, I still use it occasionally when I just feel like changing things up for the sake of it. But yeah, I don't use it a lot anymore. And I just don't like pressed powders, you know. I don't ever use them. If I'm going to use a powder at all, although I realize I'm saying that and then the Pat McGrath is a pressed powder. <laughs> so perhaps I really don't know who I am anymore. I've got lost. But for all over the face, if I ever do that, it's always a light sheer dusting of a loose powder. This looks a bit too heavy for my liking and it looks too matte for my liking to be all over the face. I feel like the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder is pretty unique when it comes to a pressed powder that is so light and fine under the eyes that I actually really enjoy it. And this one just looks a little heavy, a little matte, a little flat, a little not me. Do you know what I mean? Probably not. Next up, let's talk about these KVD Dazzle Gels. Nice little name, isn't it? Now, it may surprise you that I was kind of interested in these. I will say these are not my colors. None of these will ever get used. I don't like, these are not my shades of eyeshadow, but I really do like the description of these and the look of these swatches, although who knows if they're really, they look like genuine swatches to me. Do they to you or do they look computer generated? They look real to me. These are described as hypermetallic eyeshadows. One swipe, hypermetallic finish packed with multi-chromatic shimmer that intensifies as you blend. That sounds terrifying. They set fast, available in three shades. So I think if they had like some champagne, gold, colors of these, maybe a sort of lighter green. I would have been all in, a rose gold. Yes, count me in. These are not my shades when it comes to eyeshadow. So I'm admiring them from afar. I'd love to see reviews of these because they sound very promising and intriguing, but these are just not my colors, but I like they do look pretty, don't they? And finally, let's take a look at Nars's holiday collection, the latest holiday collection to drop in front of our eyeballs. Now, of course, none of this looks like revolutionary. We've never seen it from Nars before. Obviously, they always release every year a cheek palette. Typically, we get like blushes, either three blush, three highlighting blushes, or we get like five blushes and a highlighter. This looks like it's all blush to me, which I love because I could do without the highlighter and I can never do without more blushes. Although obviously I could do with no blushes ever again, but I love blushes. Give me all the blushes, that's how I feel. So clearly we have all seen these palettes from NARS before, but is it just me or does this look like the best one ever? These shades, I feel like there's always a couple that I won't use in them. I have like five or six of these 
palettes from NARS. I always love them. I always enjoy them. They give me a lot of joy. I love just playing with all those blushes. I think they're a great gift. So yes, I don't think it's news to us that these follow the same format that they follow every year as far as their holiday offering but this looks very wearable very beautiful all of the tones of blush that i like so i'm excited about this the same thing when it comes to the eyeshadow palette that nine pan it looks very similar to i think last year's holiday palette Again, is it revolutionary? Is it wildly out of the box what we've seen from NARS before? No, but they do always perform really solidly and they're always a really nice wearable, usable eyeshadow palette. So there are also the liquid blushes, which are, you know, I don't really use those types of products. I did like them though, and they worked quite nicely, but I wouldn't have gone out of my way to purchase those. I am on NARS's PR list. So hopefully I'll receive these in PR and I can review them for you. I think for myself, I'd probably purchase the blush palette, but not the eyeshadow palette because it's just the eyeshadow palette is very similar to last year's, which I already own. And I don't feel like I, I need that for my collection. But the blush palette, again, I don't need it, but I just love those blush palettes. They're so pretty, so beautiful. I always enjoy them. And if you can like count on a brand for a product, you can always count on NARS for their blush formula. They're always gorgeous. We've been hankering after them restocking their single blushes. So I will take what I can get from the brand right now because I love their blush formulas and the colour in there speaking my name so hopefully i might get that in pr it usually takes a bit longer to come here than it does the us and then i can review it for you and let you know my thoughts but on paper that looks right up my street so there you have it i think i've nearly lost my voice i don't know if we've ever covered so many products in a will i buy it before in our lives but we made it. Thank you so much for watching, for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.